guys. Uh, my name is Brian Allen. I'm a freelance illustrator. You can check out my work at www.flylanddesigns.com. I'm a huge fan of Manga Studio 5. Uh, I've been using Manga Studio for about two and a half years now. I use it for probably about 90% of all the artwork I create. I wanted to make this video to show some of the uh, really cool kind of hidden gems in Manga Studio 5. Um, they're, they're little features that make drawing and, and painting, in my opinion, so much easier and more enjoyable. So I think when you learn about some of these features, if you haven't given Manga Studio uh, a try yet, you're definitely going to want to pick it up. Uh, because not only is it a great program, but it's also incredibly cheap. Uh, right now, I think on Amazon, it's about 35 bucks. I mean, it's, at that point, seriously, you're kind of a deadbeat for, for not buying it. So you really just go buy it, please. All right, so let's get started. So here are some of my favorite features in Manga Studio 5. My favorite feature in Manga Studio 5 is the ability to paint and draw with transparency. All you have to do is hit X or click on the transparency swatch to uh, change to transparency. Right now I've drawn some black lines and I'll switch to transparency and my brush instantly becomes an eraser. One of my favorite features in Manga Studio 5 are reference layers. Now, the way that I usually color artwork is I have a flat colored layer underneath the actual artwork. And this is used just to make quick selections so that I can uh, sort of like an airbrush frisk it so I can color inside those selections without, um, without going outside the lines. Um, now, the problem with doing this in Photoshop is that I have to continuously switch back and forth between layers. Uh, I would need to switch to the flat layer and then make the selection and then switch back to the color layer and do my painting. With reference layers, you can actually mark that flat layer the, as the, a reference layer. Then, when I'm on the other layers, every time I use the magic wand tool and I click on, let's say, his eyeball, for example, it's selecting data from that reference layer. So, here, what I'll do, I'll get the wand out and hit select for reference layer. We'll click click the eyeball here and see the teeth are also selected because they're the same color. Um, so I can select his tongue, I can select his teeth, and I can do all this without switching to that layer underneath. And let's hide the selection here and now I can just paint. The lasso fill is also really cool. Uh, basically, it's a way to draw shapes, and as soon as you draw them, it fills with your foreground color. It works a lot like the pencil tool in Adobe Illustrator. You can also change the stabilization settings so that you can draw like really kind of smooth, curvy shapes, um, or you know, we could draw some tribal shapes here. The uh, pen selection tool is also very cool. Basically, it's a way to draw just like you would with a brush or a pen, but as soon as you draw it, it instantly becomes a uh, marquee selection. So what I'll do is I'll use it a lot for little highlights like this, like in her hair. And we'll take the airbrush and fill all those in. So I find it works a lot quicker than drawing all of those with the lasso tool. The symmetry rulers in Manga Studio 5 work a lot like they do in Sketchbook Pro. Um, I wish this was something Photoshop had. It saves so much time when you're working with um, any kind of symmetrical design. I often will uh, do the pencil stage with the symmetry ruler turned on, and then I'll go back in and ink uh, with it turned off. That way, um, that way it doesn't have like a completely symmetrical look to the design. And if the kids are in bed and you want to get really crazy, you can do symmetrical uh, rulers, I think, with up to 16 different lines. Um, so you can create some kind of weird spiral graphy designs. Um, and I've actually done this a couple times uh, for emblems and uh, background designs. Ooh, that's cool. 
I think I just designed the, the next uh, tool cover right here. Manga Studio 5 has these cool editable gradients. So just like in Adobe Illustrator, you can lay down a gradient and then afterwards change the size of it, uh, add or subtract colors, um, change the colors themselves, and then change the spacing of the gradient. And once you find something you like, then you can rasterize it uh, if you want to bring it into Photoshop. When I'm drawing, I like to uh, flip the canvas left and right uh, to make sure that I'm not making any errors. In Photoshop, when you do that, it literally flips all the pixels left and right. So that can sometimes take some time. Um, in Manga Studio, all it's doing is actually just flipping the view of it. So it's instantaneous. Um, so not only does it not take any time, but you can also do this, which I do all the time. You can open up a new window and then flip that window the other way. So as you're drawing, you can see a live preview of your artwork, but flip, but mirrored, which is super helpful. All right, this uh, nerd zombie here had to be set up for silk screening on a t-shirt. Manga Studio lets you actually paint and uh, create editable halftone layers. So I can sit here and take this pink color and change it to black and actually change the shapes of the halftone dots and the size. Um, I think we're going with 55 LPI here. And the fantastic thing is, is this is all changeable at any time. Uh, if it turns out that I was using the wrong LPI, I can go back to this file and change that uh, in a second without having to redo or re-output the, art, the artwork. And once you have something you like, you can just rasterize it and change it to black, and you're ready to go. Manga Studio uh, supports 3D objects, um, .obj files, and it also comes with a huge library of objects and these posable mannequins. I don't use it a whole lot, but it does seem like it would be pretty useful if you were learning how to draw or um, if you had a particular pose that was just really tough. So you can actually just sit here and move these guys around. Um, one advantage that the brush engine in Manga Studio has over Photoshop is that the brushes can be full color, um, much like uh, Adobe Illustrator's brushes. These are just a couple of the ones that come with Manga Studio. Um, not sure if you would actually use them, but it, it does give you an idea of how flexible this system is. I like in Manga Studio 5 how you can organize your brushes uh, better than in Photoshop. Um, basically, you can make, uh, you can customize just about anything about the user interface, but you can make little tabs and panels um, just for different categories of your brushes. Uh, versus in Photoshop, you would basically save a group of brushes and then load them essentially into a big long list that you, you go through. There's no way to really organize them um, once they're in your brush menu. To make a new brush group, you just drag a new brush up there to the top in your tabs, and then you can add new brushes or create them right into the group, or you can take existing brushes and drag them in there. Um, I've got groups for my ink brushes, my pencil brushes, shading, texture, special brushes. Uh, it's really helpful to me to have them all separated like that. I much prefer the color wheel in Manga Studio 5. Uh, it's a lot more like uh, Corel Painter's color wheel. In Photoshop, I never liked the color picker, how you have to like click on it, open it up. Um, Adobe Photoshop CC now has a live uh, color picker palette, which is a very cool step in the right direction. But I um, just find this color wheel a lot easier to use when I'm picking colors rather than uh, their kind of box thing. Um, the paint bucket tool is a lot more useful in Manga Studio 5. You can change all kinds of things about it. Um, you can make it expand uh, or contract the area it fills. Um, let me show you real quick the way it can close gaps. So if you look, if I'm going to try and fill in this guy's eye, 
there's a little gap that I left open in the ink um, down here. Rather than go and try to redraw that area, because um, I'd rather leave it open, you can choose the close gap option. We'll turn the sensitivity way up. And then there you go. It reads that gap as if it were uh, a complete line. One thing I used to do a lot in Photoshop is when I'm, when I'm coloring underneath line art, uh, I usually had to expand the selection by one pixel so that the color kind of overlapped the line art. Well, in Manga Studio, you can set up the paint bucket or the magic wand to automatically expand uh, as many pixels as you want um, when you select that area, which is so cool because it saves that whole extra step and makes everything so much faster. Here I have it set up so that when I click, it'll automatically fill in, uh, I think, two pixels more, or select two pixels more. There we go. Let's give him some pink eye. It also lets you quickly change the color uh, of any layer. Um, so the default setting is to change it to this like kind of cool non-photo blue. So when I uh, work with pencils, I always change it to this blue, lower the opacity, and then I can ink over top. Um, it's just easier to see what's my ink and what's the pencil. So I use the same exact effect uh, when I'm setting up t-shirts. I basically keep each color in, uh, in a folder of layers and you can apply uh, this, la this color effect to every single layer inside the folder. Um, this is a lot, when I want to change the color then, instead of having to change the color of each individual layer, I just click on the color uh, of the whole group and it changes them all at once. Um, it's really cool because I'm able to quickly experiment with different colors uh, without flat or without merging the layers below. All right, so check this out. So I have this iguana and I want to delete this eyeball, but I have it in three different layers, the line art and the color and some other thing. Uh, in Photoshop, I'd have to make a selection and delete each layer individually. But in Manga Studio, I just select the layer group and bam, I can delete all three layers at the same time. So the same thing goes for uh, cutting and pasting um, and copying and pasting multiple layers at once. In Photoshop, you can only do this one layer at a time. Um, in Manga Studio, I can make the selection here. Let's take his arm and I'm going to select the line art layer and the color layer. And we're going to cut it and let's put it in a new layer group um, called arm. And once we have that, then it still can, it still keeps all the layers intact. Um, the only other way to do this in Photoshop would be to do a copy merged and uh, that's not what we want because we want those layers still separated. This is the sub view. Uh, it's a palette in Manga Studio 5 where you can open up an image or multiple images to use as reference. It's useful when you're doing a character for a children's book or a comic book where you have to match the color um, to how they looked on another illustration. Basically you load an image or, or multiple images into here and whenever you move your mouse over the sub view it automatically turns into an eyedropper tool. So it makes it really easy to very quickly um, grab colors from. You could also use it to uh, grab colors from uh, another illustration whose color scheme you like. Um, or you could even, uh, sometimes I'll actually just save my own kind of palettes in that area. Uh, the mesh transform tool is pretty tasty here. It's, I think it's more useful than the warp transform tool in Photoshop because uh, you can actually warp um, or transform multiple layers at once. So here I'm going to try and bend Kermit's uh, feather here and I'm moving the line art layer and the color layer and an, a highlights layer all at the same time. You can actually change the amount of uh, the number of grid points here um, which gives you a lot of flexibility. I actually only want a couple here so this is yeah so once you do that, then you can kind of bend these things around, um, and there you go. A neat feature in Manga Studio 5 is that it treats brush strokes that are made really quickly together as one undo step. 
So if I'm doing a bunch of tiny little strokes and I realize I don't like them, I can just hit undo once and then they all go away. Uh, whereas like in Photoshop, that would have been probably 20 little undos. All right, so this is cool. Um, there's a way in Manga Studio to quickly take scanned line art and separate it from its background so that you can paint underneath. Um, and it does it in a way that's very quick and it doesn't create any like white edges or and it really extracts every bit of the line art. Um, all you gotta do is take your layer and then go to edit convert brightness to opacity and then you got yourself a zombie ready to be painted. I like the way Manga Studio handles drawing straight lines. Um, like when you're doing it here in Photoshop you hold shift and basically if you're using a brush with pressure sensitivity, it's going to make the, uh, the brush thick to thin, which is not usually what you want. Here in Manga Studio, when you hold shift, it basically gives you a preview of what your line is going to look like, and then when you let go, it will finish the line um, without any pressure sensitivity. And if you move the brush around um, while you're holding shift, you can still draw freehand, and then when you let go of the or when you lift up the pen, it will become a straight line. So it's really cool because it, it makes this continuous, seamless line. The rulers are one of the main advantages that Manga Studio has. You can draw all kinds of different rulers, like here's a parallel line ruler, which is really helpful. Um, you can move the ruler pretty easily just by holding control and move it around. Now any line here will be parallel to that. Um, it has figure rulers for drawing circles. Uh, in Photoshop, I used to draw a path and then stroke the path, um, which sounds dirty. But with the rulers, you can really get uh, a nice, like, pressure-sensitive line uh, in line weight variation um, while not having to worry about, of course, drawing a perfect figure. And they also have uh, perspective rulers, which are incredibly helpful. Uh, focus line rulers, um, and they even have freehand rulers, so you can just quickly draw uh, your own curves and then go back over them again with uh, pen pressure variation. And that's it. Thank you for watching. Uh, please post any questions or comments you have uh, in the comments section, and I'll answer them as quickly as I can.